Well, good morning again. God is good, isn't he? And all the time? Amen. We serve a good God. We traditionally say over the last 2,000 years to one another, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Yeah, it's interesting, they don't, you don't greet, re- greet one another and people say, the stock market is risen. <laughs> it is risen indeed. The gross national product is risen. It is risen indeed. Because that's not what we put our ultimate hope in. Our ultimate hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> there used to be a program on TV called Real People, and they had these real situations. And uh, one show, they, they showed a package that had been sent to an inmate at a prison, and it was returned with the label on it that said, escaped, left no forwarding address. <laughs> now, we are here not because Jesus escaped. How many of you know he didn't escape death? He conquered death. We're here not to mourn the dead Jesus. We're here to celebrate a living, risen Savior who has conquered death. On the cross, he did not say, it is over. Thank God it's over. He said, it is finished. It was a note of triumph when he said, it is finished. I finished the work that the God the Father has given to me, accomplished the redemption of mankind, and it is finished. That's a note of declaration of of triumph and victory that we have. And I always always find this kind of an an irony that where you are seated right now, there used to be a church building other than this uh, building uh, who's the person who gave the Um, dedicatory speech when it was first built in 1906 was a pastor in Montclair by the name of Harry Emerson Fosdick. A very, had a very large Baptist church. Um, But he he was the first Baptist pastor to come out and declare they did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he stood in the very same area where I am right now and got up and said, Jesus did not come raised from the dead. He was not resurrected. It was just a a parable or a metaphor. But my privilege and our privilege is to be able to stand in the same place and say, he is not a parable. He rose from the dead. Jesus is alive. He conquered death. Amen. Amen. So I always get a a thrill. (laughs) being able to say that in this particular location. We haven't come this morning to mourn the dead Jesus. Anybody here come to mourn the dead Jesus? Because you're looking for the church down the road. Uh, This is not the church. We're here to celebrate one who has conquered death, who is risen from the dead, who reigns on high forevermore. Jesus is not only alive, he is the most alive person in the universe. To encounter Jesus is to encounter life. That is what he's all about. He said, if I live, you too shall live. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't say, I've come that you might have religion and have it more abundantly. Who wants some more religious stuff to do? You don't have enough He didn't say, I have come that you might have rules and regulations and have them more abundantly. How many of you want some more rules to keep? He said, I have come because what his people needed was life. I have come that you might have life. I am the resurrection and the life. If I live, you too shall live. For I have come that you might have life. Christians are more than just people who go to church, who believe a certain creed, who even live a certain lifestyle. A Christian is someone who has encountered the resurrected Lord and received 
his resurrection life and power. That's the essence of what Christianity is all about. You talked about the culture of Christianity, but there is the reality, the power of Christianity, which is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said, if Christ is not risen, then you are still in your sins. Without the literal bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have no message to share. We have no gospel to proclaim. We have no hope to offer. We have no redemption to celebrate. Paul said, if Christ is not risen, then my preaching is in vain, and I'm wasting my time here. I could be doing something else. If your faith is in vain, then you're wasting your time. You could be doing something else. If Christ is not risen, then we are still in our sins. We are of most, of all people, most to be pitied because we're believing a lie. We're living an illusion if indeed he was not risen. But he is risen. That makes all the difference. Heard a story <clears throat> recently about a woman who was looking out her window while she was doing the dishes and to her horror, she saw her dog, she had a big German shepherd with the next door neighbor's rabbit in his mouth, shaking it violently, shaking the life out of it. And she began to panic because they didn't have a good relationship with their neighbors to start with. So I got to do something. She grabs a broom, runs out, and pummels the dog with the broom until he finally lets go of the rabbit. She didn't know what to do with this poor rabbit. It's all lifeless. She took it inside. She gave it a bath. <laughs> washed it up, used the hair dryer to fluff the fur, <laughs> and combed out all the knots, and so he looked like he was a perfectly normal little rabbit, and then she snuck into the neighbor's yard and put the rabbit in the back of the cage, stood him up, propped him up. <laughs> then about an hour later, she hears this horrific scream. She runs out in the yard, her neighbor is there, says, what's wrong? She said, it's my rabbit. He died two weeks ago and we buried him and now he's back here <laughs> in the cage. <laughs> now you can go a lot of directions with that. That's, that's just... They didn't prop Jesus up somewhere and say, knowing he's dead, and say he's alive. They didn't turn it into a metaphor. They didn't turn it into a parable. The followers of Jesus were so radically changed, the only explanation could be that he, who was dead, rose from the, from the dead and is alive. He is alive. That's what we're here to proclaim this morning. If Christ is alive and he is risen, it changes everything. It changes despair into hope, trials into opportunities. It turns death to life, turns new um, dead ends into new beginnings, defeat into victory, tragedy into triumph. It changes everything. Most importantly, if Jesus was raised from the dead, it means that he was who he said he was, he was indeed who he claimed to be, and he made some pretty astounding claims. He claimed to be the only way to God the Father. He claimed to be the only one who knew, really knew who God was and could reveal him. He made the claim that only he could, imp could grant, in part, the regenerating, life-giving spirit of God. He claimed nothing less than he was God himself. Now, if I was to say to Jesus, Jesus, what are your credentials for ministering? What, what gives you the authority to, to minister? What are your credentials? And he said to me, well, let's see. I was dead. Now I'm alive. I would say that I think that's pretty good credentials. I would say that validates... <laughs> your right to be able to speak. <laughs> Nobody else has made that claim, has used that as their credentials. 
But Jesus said, when people challenged his credentials and wanted a sign, what sign do you give? He said, I give you the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the whale three days and three nights, so the Son of Man shall be in the belly of the earth three days and three nights, but he will be raised again. And the resurrection is what the validation of God upon his ministry and his life And the vindication that who Jesus was, who he claimed to be, was indeed who he was. Someone said it this way, summed it up so well. The resurrection was God's amen to Christ, it is finished. The resurrection is God's validation. When Christ said it is finished, the validation, the vindication of the Father was amen in the resurrection. That was his saying, so be it. If Jesus was who he claimed to be, then the good news is he will will do what he promised to do. And the resurrection is for us the seal of assurance that our sins are forgiven, that we are reconciled to God. We are righteous before God and heirs to a glorious inheritance. The resurrection is the promise of new life, and not only new life, but the power to live that new life in accordance with who we are in Christ. And the resurrection is the pledge that all those who believe in him will live forever. So I just want to take a few moments to outline those three aspects. Number one, the resurrection is the seal of assurance that God has forgiven our sins and redeems our mistakes and our failures. The God of resurrection is also the God of redemption. God is a redeemer. He loves to redeem what is lost. He loves to redeem what is broken and beyond our capacity to repair. He redeems as well as his resurrection. Colossians 2, 13. You were dead because of your sins. What does that mean? You were spiritually dead because your sins separated you from your source of life, who is God. To be dead is to be separated from the source of life. You pick an apple from the tree, the moment you pick that apple, you're separated from the source of life, it is dead. We were separated from our source of spiritual life, who is God, because of our sins. We were spiritually dead. But God made you alive with Christ and forgave all of your sins. And here's what I want you to to grab hold of. When Jesus died on the cross, we died with him and he, because he forgave all our sins. When Jesus rose from the dead, we rose with him to newness of life. But here's the one we, we usually miss. When Jesus walked out of that tomb, leaving that behind him, we who are, were in his death and resurrection sometimes stay in the tombs that people want to bury us in and not emerge with Christ. You see, 2,000 years ago, they tried to bury Christ. He would not stay in the tombs that they tried to bury him in. And for 2,000 years, they've been trying to bury him in tomb after tomb. But he's got this funny way of breaking out of the tombs that people try to bury him in. But because he lives, Jesus Christ is able to set you free from the tombs that people will try to put you in. Tombs of guilt and shame. We stay imprisoned in the tomb. The tombs of mistakes and failures and fears and regrets are tombs that we let people bury us in And we need to understand that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is also the redemption of our past mistakes and failures. Regrets are inevitable, but they don't have to be final. They're inevitable because you and I are not perfect people who never make mistakes. God is the only one who never says, oops. We say it a lot more than I wish we did. Um, before this day is out, I will have said oops a number of times. But we, Christians are not perfect people, but they are imperfect people 
who believe in a God who can forgive what we've done, who can change who we are, who can redeem our failures and offer us the opportunity of a new beginning. The God of resurrection is the God of redemption. He redeems what was, what was lost. He restores the years that the lo locusts have eaten. He redefines the regrets of our life. He repairs the messes that we've made, recreates them into something beautiful. He takes even the dark threads of your life and weaves them into a tapestry that will produce something beautiful. Because he's so incredible in power, in resurrection power, and as our redeemer. The resurrection is the seal of assurance that God has forgiven our sins and that he, can, he will and can redeem our mistakes and failures to ultimately use them to his glory. Second thing the resurrection does and the reason why everything changes because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is it, it, it's the promise of a new life. Promise not only of new life from him, but resurrection power, resurrection life, to live the new life he's called us to. Romans 6, 4, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so now we also may live new lives. We live new lives because the, the resurrection power that, rose, that raised Christ from the dead was the Spirit. And if that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your body. He will raise you up in newness of life and power. Let me ask you this question. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would you change? I would ask if I could make that 10 things. Um, <laughs> some of you, it might be some, something, your uh, outward personal appearance. Some of us would like to be a little taller, some of us a little shorter, some of us a little wider, some of us a little less wide. There may be some physical uh, attribute that we would change. For some of us, it would be maybe a character aspect or personality. Some of us would want to be more confident, more disciplined, more outgoing, less impulsive, more patient, more loving. Most people would change something about themselves, and they even know what they would change, but they don't have the power to do that. So we go to seminars, we, go to, we, we read self-help books, and they give us the principles to live by. They tell us, here's what you need to do in order to do this, but they, they don't give us the power to do it. And we read the Bible, we even struggle. Well, how, how can I be what they tell me to be in the Bible? Because God, in his death and resurrection, sent his Holy Spirit to give us new life and the power of that resurrection in our lives. There's a little poem that's one of my favorites I share with some of you. It says, do this and live, the law commands. The law says, just do this and you'll live. But it gives me neither feet nor hands. A better hope the gospel brings, it bids me fly and gives me wings. God not only exhorts us to live a certain lifestyle, he empowers us to be able to live that lifestyle because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That resurrection power is imparted to us by the Holy Spirit. Because he lives, Christ offers us the promise of new life and the power to live that life. The message of Easter is a message of hope. It's a message of power. It's a message of forgiveness. And it's also a message that offer, he offers to us in the, in the resurrection a preview and a pledge of eternal life to come. Let me read this as we wrap it up. Read this quote from Philip Yancey. Something in human beings cries out against the reign of death. We have, have always resisted the idea that death is final. Whether that hope takes the form of Egyptian pharaohs stashing their jewels and chariots in pyramids, or modern American obsession with keeping bodies alive until the last possible nanosecond. 
we just resist the idea of death having the final word. But because of Easter, even the most horrible event in history, the crucifixion, was turned into a memory. Because of Easter, I have reason to hope that the tears that I've shed, the blows I've received, the emotional pain, the heartache of lost friends and loved ones, will all become memories like Jesus' scars. They will never completely go away, but they will, never, they will not pain us any longer. They will not hurt us any longer. We will have a new start, an Easter start. Easter is the starting point, the one incontrovertible fact about how God treats those he loves, the preview of ultimate reality. Hope flows like lava beneath the crust of daily life. Let me close with this story about Winston Churchill. He was a great man, but he came to the place in his life where he would, like all those who've gone before him, die as well. He, pre he prepared his own funeral, spelled out all the details of what would happen in his funeral. And when they went through the funeral service and the last benediction was given and it was totally quiet, in the great St. Paul's Cathedral, sound of a bugler in the far upward corner in the dome began to play the song Taps, which is universally understood as the day is over, it's past, time to go to sleep. And people waited for the last notes to fade in Taps assuming that was the end, but as the last notes faded in taps, another bugler came and started playing Reveille, which is the traditional song of wake up, it's time to wake up, it's a new day. His funeral did not end on taps, it ended on it's a new day because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is risen. Amen. One more time. He is risen. He is risen Amen. God bless.